Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. This is episode number 642. It's the sixth in a series of all pre-recorded shows due to the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak. Why are we pre-recording? Because station management would like to minimize the number of people in the building in you can't blame them, really. And of course, there's no question of the day because we don't really have a way of doing that when we've recorded it the day before it airs. But we'll get back to the question of the day soon enough. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, it's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. That would be awesome. Also, all past video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Okay, so today's show is about the fact that we opened on May 1st. I had this awesome plan for the show, which was going to be on Friday morning, right before our morning meeting. I was going to interview all of my staff and get their feelings on, you know, about the fact that we were just about to open. Were they excited? Were they scared? Whatever it was. And we would just go around the table and get their opinions or thoughts. And then I thought at the end of the day, we would do the same thing and ask them how they thought it went and if there were any surprises or anything like that. But guess what? We were just way too busy. <laughs> I didn't have time to do any of that. But I do want to explain how we operated and how we will be operating uh, moving forward. Because as it turns out, on Friday, May 1st, there was an article in the dispatch of course, I didn't read it because I left for work before I got my newspaper. I was at the office by 10 to 7, and I probably don't even get the newspaper until 7.38 these days. We moved, and it just seems like they can't get us the paper before I leave for work. But anyway, there was an article where it says, Some worry as dental offices set to reopen. And to be honest, it was all about some dental hygienists that were worried about their safety uh, when we would be open. And... Um, it goes on to talk about how some of the offices were scrambling to get PPE, personal protective equipment, because they had donated their equipment to folks at the hospitals, the ones on the front lines, because they were asked to. Now, we didn't want to be non-cooperative, but we knew that we were going to be volunteering to do the emergency procedures that people would need during the shutdown, so we didn't donate our PPE. In fact, during the time that we were closed, we were acquiring more of it. So some of the concerns raised in the newspaper article had to do with the fact that offices either donated their PPE or never had enough to begin with. And the hygienists were concerned that they would be asked to be working without proper PPE. And by the way, that would be illegal. That would go against the Ohio State Dental Board and the dentist who may or may not have chosen to do that would be brought before the board. So I don't know if that happened or not. I think it was just fear, maybe fear of the unknown, or maybe some of these uh, hygienists didn't trust their doctor to do the right thing. I really don't know. But they are highly trained professionals, highly trained medical professionals, and as such, they were taught the same thing us dentists were taught about infection control. And we've always had great infection control. It happened primarily back when AIDS first happened, and we had to step up our game. Everyone did. Hospitals, doctor's offices, everyone had to start doing what is called universal precautions. And what that means is we assume every patient has AIDS, or at least back then we did. What we had to do was 
make sure that our infection control was so solid that it didn't matter whether the person in our chair had AIDS or not. Now, why do we have to do that? We had to do that because people who had AIDS or were HIV positive back then when it was first discovered and first became an issue, were afraid that if they told a medical professional or a dentist that they had AIDS, that they would refuse to treat them. So the dental board came out and said, you can't refuse to treat anyone who's HIV positive or who flat out has AIDS. But what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you treat all of the instruments, all of the armamentarium, the rooms, everything as though people did. So we've been doing that for decades now. And I guess to me, in my mind, there's a little bit of a disconnect because these hygienists went to the same training, through the same training that dentists did, and we understand that. So I'm not sure why they are so nervous. I mean, I know it's okay to be concerned, but with goggles and gowns and masks and, you know, the N95 mask and gloves and all of that outer layer protective covering, we're safe, okay? Now, I did talk to one hygienist who said her concern was that, well, what if I make a mistake when I take my glove off? What if I take it off in the wrong order? What if I touch something? And that's a valid concern, although that is well within the control of the medical professional, in this case, the hygienist. So it seems like if it is a big concern of hers, and they're usually female, there are some male hygienists, but most of them are female, then she would need to be super cautious and super careful. As the owner of the dental office, I'm obligated to support her. I'm obligated to protect my staff. I'm obligated to protect the patients. Because let's face it, the patients can't be wearing a mask once they're in our chair. Only we can wear the mask, right? We're working on their mouth, so having a mask is not going to work. Okay, so, and that's something else. I got an email from a patient asking, they have a, an appointment coming up, and they asked me, what were our procedures for COVID-19 for working on patients during this time, now that we're open, for covering their eyes and their nostrils? They understood that their mouth was going to have to be uncovered because we're working on that. But she wanted to know about their nostrils and their eyes. So in our response, and my office manager actually wrote it, but he and I spoke about it first, our response was, well, the only germs in the room are going to be hers because we're going to have masks on. I actually, we wear an N95 mask and a level three mask over top of that. And we have those flip down face shields, the plastic ones. And then we have our regular clinic gowns. And then we have the uh, gown that you see that goes over top that looks like a scrub gown. And so she's not going to get anything from us. All of the germs in the room, at least when it comes to that aerosol that we hear about, that happens when we work on a tooth or clean teeth would be hers. So in my mind, there'd be no reason to cover her eyes because they're her own germs. There'd be no reason to cover her nostrils for the same reason. And I don't know how we would cover them unless it was with a towel or something, which is possibly possible. And it's okay if that's what she wants to do and maybe not necessary. I do have some patients who are nervous and they say they actually do better when they have essentially a blindfold. They say, okay, I'm really nervous about this. I don't want to see anything you guys are doing. So I want you to put a, like a towel over my eyes and then they put their glasses over top of that or some sunglasses that we might have and that way they feel better. Okay, so let's get back to the woman that wanted to know if we were covering her eyes and her nostrils. So we do actually have these uh, disposable eyeglasses. The, uh, they're like, they look like overgrown sunglasses, but they're clear. And we can have a person wear those if it makes them feel better, and we'll be happy to do that. And we have many of those, so we can use a different one for every patient. As far as their nostrils, yeah, we can probably put a cloth over there. But a lot of times people breathe through their nose when we're working on their mouth, so we do have to be cautious about what we do in that regard. So yeah, we feel like we have the basis covered. So let me explain a little bit about how we're doing this. How are we operating safely? One of the things we did was we instituted people calling us when they arrive, telling us they're there, and then we ask them to sit in their car until we're ready to bring them not just into the building, but all the way back to their treatment room. So that way we can put them in their treatment room by themselves and we can close the door. But before we even bring them in the building, we take their temperature. We have that forehead thermometer that you just shine it on their forehead and it instantly gives you their temperature. And by the way, 
When we arrive, we're required to take our own temperatures and we write that down so that we know that every staff member does not have a fever. And if a patient has a fever, we won't see them. And if a, an employee has a fever, we'd have to send them home. We have doors on every treatment room. Most offices don't. Okay, so that's one thing we're doing. The other thing we did was we removed several of the uh, chairs from our reception room. One of the reasons is we know there will be times when people need to be sitting in the reception room. Why? Because some people ride the bus, so they don't have a car to sit in. Some people walk, some people ride their bike. Sometimes you have a case where say a 14 year old has the appointment, so mom or dad has to drive them. Now, if mom or dad drove them, mom or dad would wait in the car. But if mom and uh, dad or mom or dad and the son or daughter rode the bus or walked or rode their bikes, again, we have an adult that needs to be uh, waiting somewhere and in the reception room seems to make sense. So that's one thing we did. Another thing we did was we took and put arrows made out of blue tape on the floor, essentially making our hallways one way. So when you come in, you have to go to the right and you have to keep going all the way around the hall to get back up to the counter, to the front desk. We wanted to make sure that people weren't crossing in the hallway. You know, it's a narrow hallway. Not really, but it's, it's, um, it's sufficient, but it's still a hallway. And so we didn't want somebody coming out of this treatment room and running into this person who's walking down the hall. So now when you leave the treatment room, everybody makes a right turn. And if there's somebody else in the hall, you'll see them and you can keep six feet back from them and you can stay safe in that way. Of course, we put X's on the floor. So when people are ready to check out, if they're not at the counter, there's an X six feet back, so they can wait there. The same with checking in. And so we have that part covered. The other thing we have, of course, is we change those outer gowns between every patient. Obviously, we change our gloves. We wash our hands. And again, we wear both N95 and Level 3 masks at the same time. So I want to get into a little bit about how the day went. But it looks like it's time for us to go to a break. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 642, and we'll be right back. You won't believe it though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavicko on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavicko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko. Guess what? We're open and here to take care of all of your dental needs. It's been a long time coming, but in the words of Governor DeWine, it's full steam ahead. During the time we were closed, we were acquiring PPE. We were developing a plan to keep you safe. We've had Zoom meetings, a very active text string, and in addition to going into the office to take care of emergencies, we've been in complete contact with each other, so we'd be ready. Are you ready? We bet your teeth and gums are. Don't forget, your teeth haven't been cleaning themselves. Your cavity haven't been getting any smaller and your gum disease hasn't been healing itself and if you haven't had x-rays in a while or an exam there could be a lot of things going on in there that you're not aware of because let's face it cavities don't hurt even abscesses don't hurt until they get really bad call us at 614-262-9588 that's 614-262-9588 or go to drkvitko.com that's d-r-k-v-i-t-k-o.com Johanna and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavicko and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavicko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavicko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today. 614-262-95 Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay.
Okay, we're back. I'm Dr. Gvitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode 642. Thank you so much for joining me. We're kind of talking about the fact that dental offices opened May 1st. That would have been last Friday. And some of the concerns that were raised by some hygienists, especially as reported in the Columbus Dispatch. And also explaining why they don't have to worry. Why, at least at our office, we're taking all of the precautions and everything is going to be just fine. Now, I will say that the article also mentioned that some of the doctors that don't have the proper PPE, they're not opening yet. One office was going to wait till May 11th. Another office was going to wait until May 19th. And that's awesome. In fact, one of my biggest fears is that we are going to be doing everything right. As I mentioned, we are doing everything right. We're being very, very careful. And if there's a dentist out there who is not, because the article also mentioned that some of the offices apparently opened without the proper precautions, the proper PPE, then it could impugn all dental offices and possibly cause the governor to shut down all dental offices again. So I, I hope that doesn't happen. And actually, as I was saying that, I was thinking of some of the other things that we are doing. So again, we have 10 treatment rooms. So we have the ability to let a chair, that room sit. We don't use it right away. We let it sit. We sterilize, not sterilize. You can't sterilize an entire room. You disinfect a room and you sanitize it. But anyway, we spray it down with our banicide and we make sure everything is clean. And then we let it sit for an hour at least. We don't reuse it. So that gives a chance for that disinfectant to kill all of the bacteria and any virus that might be in there. We've also gone to having the doctor just have one patient at a time, not running from room to room to room. And also we are allowing more time between visits for us to get a room ready. Not just get the room ready, because don't forget, we're not going to reuse that room right away, but it does have to be disinfected so that it can be ready in an hour or so. But also for us to take off the gowns that we have on and our mask and put a new set on. That takes time. In fact, I'm like a little kid. I can't tie those ties behind me. You've got There's a tie like around my neck and then there's a tie around the waist. For some reason, my staff can put their own on just fine and I'm always going, can you tie this for me. I just can't do it. Anyway, and and guess what? I can't untie it either. I need help untying it. In fact, I tried it myself once and I made a big knot and they, they actually had to cut that one off. And I got to tell you, after spending a day wearing all of that, you're tired. It's hot. Not only that, those masks, the bridge of my nose, I swear it has a dent in it because again, we're wearing two masks, but that mask sits right on the bridge of your nose. It's kind of sealed up there. And then of course my glasses, I have to put my glasses kind of in front of the mask, otherwise they get fogged up. So it's a little bit uh, cumbersome, but well worth it. I mean, we all have loved ones at home. I don't want to bring anything home to my family. I don't want to give anything to anybody. And so we're very, very, very cautious and we're very, very aware. So let me tell you a little bit about how the day went. Like I said, we were too busy to do the interviews that I was hoping that I could do because man, we were, uh, we were having our meeting and about 30 minutes before their appointment, our first two patients showed up. I mean, we're talking, I believe, about pent-up demand. Those two patients were just there for their dental cleaning, although the, it was a mom and a, and a young boy, and the, the boy actually wound up needing a filling, but they were very anxious to come in and get their teeth cleaned. And then another one of the early patients, she had a very serious infection previously, had a root canal done, and as they normally do, the endodontist just put a temporary filling in. Well, that made her very, very nervous because the endodontist told her it would uh, stay in just fine, but it's not very structurally sound. And so she just couldn't wait to get a real filling in there so she could chew on that side again. The reality is that she probably could have chewed on that side again, but she was afraid to. Another patient that we saw early in the morning was a woman that had had some porcelain veneers placed a while back, and she just thought that maybe the, the one was too large or maybe hit her lip funny or whatever. But after taking a look and doing some measurements and listening to her say her phonics, the different sounds that we use to determine if somebody's able to speak properly, things like Sister Susie Says and Church and Judge and Fan and Van and Vivian and These and Them and Those, when we have people say those words, we can see how the teeth hit the wet dry line of the lip. We can tell if the tongue is hitting the back of the teeth just right, because if it's not, instead of saying these, them, and those, you'd wind up saying these, them, and those. Anyway, so hers, if you think about it, was strictly cosmetic, and of course none of that could have been done when we were completely shut down. Turns out nothing was going on, and she said, well, why don't we do a cleaning while I'm here, and we did. So uh, we had somebody else that did come with pain on her right side. So she could have been seen prior to Friday, but must not have been hurting before that. So hers was interesting, actually. She was sure she had some kind of an infection some in the gum or maybe an abscess tooth or something. And we found 
nothing. The tissue was perfectly pink, there was no ulceration, there was no redness, no swelling, the x-rays were completely negative, the teeth were not tender to tapping, not tender to pushing on them, not tender to biting, there was absolutely nothing obvious on the x-ray, no decay, no cracks in the teeth, and so what could it be? There's this condition called trigeminal neuralgia. It's not something we see very often, but trigeminal is the name of the fifth cranial nerve, and that's the nerve that serves the oral cavity and the face, including the muscles of mastication. And so what can happen is that nerve can be triggered in some way, some mysterious way to be honest. We don't even really quite understand it. It's a situation that is also known or used to be known as tic du la rue. But anyway, trigeminal neuralgia. And it, as it turns out, she actually had that on her left side and had it several years ago and it was under control and she hasn't had any flare-ups. And so when it happened on the right side, she was certain that it wasn't that because she thought if it were that, it was only going to be on the left side. But anyway, that's what we feel it is, and we've referred her back to her physician to have that confirmed. But anyway, pretty interesting, I think. So you know what? I'm looking at the clock, and it looks like it's time for us to go to a break. Thank you so much for tuning in. When we come back, we're going to talk more about the kinds of procedures that we saw on our first day and some of the comments and thoughts of my staff from the day. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 642, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am. Just a little bit I don't know who to be I'm a faithful cup, baby, of the sea I know you see it too Cause you're too much for me This is Clark Kellogg Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko Aquí en su sesión favorita Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service By becoming a sponsor Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> All right, we're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitka, and we're talking about the fact that dental offices, most of them, I believe, opened on May 1st, a couple of days ago. Some haven't opened because they didn't have the proper PPE in stock. PPE, by the way, if you can't remember, stands for Personal Protective Equipment. You've heard that a lot, but I think they say it so fast, some people don't even understand what they're saying. So as I mentioned before the break, I wanted to talk a little bit about what my staff was saying about the day. Just like me, they were saying how taxing it is to wear that PPE and to be certain to do everything right. It's very important that we do everything right, and so you have to put a lot of thought into it. I know the one dental assistant said the minute she got home, she was going to eat dinner and then just crash, just go to sleep. We haven't been working on a regular basis for over six weeks, and so I thought it would be good for us to go in on a Friday and knowing that we would just work one day and then we'd have two days off a little bit like when kids go back to school in the fall or at least when kids used to go back to school in the fall we'll see what happens this year but you know how what they'll do is they'll have kids come back sometimes like right before the labor day holiday and they'll come in and maybe have class for say wednesday thursday friday or maybe just thursday friday and then they're off saturday sunday and monday and so when they come back they have a four-day week. They start with a three-day week if they go to school Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then they have a four-day week because they don't come back till Tuesday because of the three-day holiday. And then the, another, the next week, they're up to five days. And so I thought coming in on Friday, May 1st would be a good thing because we can work a full day, have two days off, 
come back on Monday and do it all over again. Not quite as good as what the kids get, but it's, it was my attempt. So anyway, besides being exhausted, being very, very tired, I think that they did really well. They really did. Uh, we have a really good system. The patients were very cooperative. We had no complaints that I'm aware of. And people have been, those of us that have been to the store already are becoming used to this new norm, which is you have this X and it says stand, stand here. You know, you have arrows that say, I was at Lowe's and there are these arrows that say go to the garden center, go this way. So they have all these, it's like a detour. They take you down the store this way, you make a left, you go into the garden center in one door and you come out the other door. That's their attempt to have essentially one-way traffic like we set up in our office. I think the other thing that was probably the word of the day was how busy we were and how busy we think we're going to continue to be. Again, I mentioned earlier in the show about the uh, pent-up demand. And so, boy, you think your hair is getting long? Think about your teeth, you know. Uh, I haven't had my hair cut in seven weeks, and it feels like I'm almost wearing a haircut that's as long as when I was 16. But if you, you can look at your hair and see the change that's happened in that seven weeks, and you can't look at your teeth and see what the change is. But we can. In fact, we're the only ones that can. You will not know if you have a cavity until it hurts. And if you wait till it hurts, it's probably a root canal or an extraction. So as you watch your hair grow, as you watch your roots become more obvious, all of that stuff, just think what's happening in your mouth. So if you had a small cavity, seven, eight weeks later, it could be a medium-sized cavity. If you had a medium-sized cavity that you either didn't know about or knew about but hadn't done anything with, it could be a large cavity by the time you get in. So, and I found that Last Friday, there were this mom and daughter that came in. Both had a bunch of fillings that they needed. They'd been diagnosed before we were shut down, before the virus COVID-19 took over. And they were very anxious to get in to have things fixed because they didn't want them to grow. And I'm telling you, they were pretty deep. They were more, they were more deep than we thought they would be. And I'm thinking it's because they were growing for almost two months since they were diagnosed. I had this other gentleman come in for impressions for upper and lower immediate dentures. Now, that would not be considered an emergency, and of course, because we're open on Friday, it didn't have to be an emergency. But I'm telling you, it kind of was because he had to use all this like glue to keep his uppers in, and his teeth had turned rotten, and his plan is to get the remaining four to eight teeth extracted, and we're going to make him dentures called immediate dentures, which means they go in the same day we take those teeth out. So we got a bite record, we got impressions of his ridges, we got an impression of his old upper so that we could show the lab the shape of the teeth. Picked a color that matched one that he was wearing. He likes the color that they are now, even though it's a little dark. He likes the darker color. No one will know that he's done anything different. And so we're probably going to have him fixed up in about I'm going to say a week and a half or two. And so this gentleman was having trouble chewing, you know, having trouble eating and really, really needed to get in to get these dentures made. So all in all, it was a good day. Everyone was tired. We all felt good about what we had done, about how careful we'd been and all of the wonderful care that we believe we provided to our patients. Well, looks like that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Before we go, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kivitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614 614- 
614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588 or send an email to speaking at 